William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Did you ever wonder, folks, how a certain species of blonde can breathe in spite of a heart of stone? The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. A confidential investigator occupies a kind of strategic position in law enforcement. He can mix with an element a regular department cop is obliged to scorn, if not arrest on sight. Like a cop, the confidential operator is on the side of the angels, but he can work for the devil, like I did, not too voluntarily once upon a crime. The case came at me in broad daylight at the foot of Father Duffy's statue on Broadway. The first I knew of it was a gun in my ribs. Free, Shamus, and don't let out a peep. A tough right out of a B-movie with a reek to him like he ate garlic for candy. Is it a gun or a monkey wrench, Sonny? Bleed and find out. A line of dialogue like that, you ought to copyright. Hey, you're talking yourself to death. Shut my mouth. See that car in the corner? <laughs> the green and white job that reads PD? Not the police car, smart guy, the one behind it. Oh, the hot limousine. It ain't hot. It was bought legitimate. Pardon me. Go get into it. Times must be hard for you to get down to me. This isn't a snatch. Then what is it? You'll find out. In with you. Give her the gun, Needles. And off the big street, first turn you can make. Heading downtown, I tried for a peek into my future. Who was it? Who was who? Hired you to work over me. <laughs> You're sure in a sweat, Shamus. It's my memories coming back. A lot of guys resent the free room and board I arranged for them up the river. You're guessing wrong. Oh, I'm relieved. Or am I? I'm going to blindfold you now. A uh, cigarette toast? Then why ain't you a comedian? Right now, I wish I'd pick the occupation. Hold steady. Can't see, can you? <laughs> Can't even breathe. Why include my nose in a blindfold? Breathe through your mouth, like me. I haven't the adenoids for it. Yeah, another crack, I'll rock you to sleep. Now shut up and enjoy the ride. I could guess our general destination by the odor. A New Yorker develops a nose for local geography. Front Street somewhere, off the East River. The foot and fish market couldn't be too far away. Hey, you're going down cellar steps, so hold on to the rail. I've got the rail. In with your shamus. Hey, was that push necessary? Here's your pigeon, boss. Good work. Take the blindfold off. I second the motion. Hello, Craig. Wait till the fog lifts. Not Sam Stacy. <laughs> Surprised? I'm shocked at the lousy reporting this town gets. The headlines have you in Acapulco and China. The papers have been crucifying me. Mad dog killer Stacy. Where do they come off with that stuff? <laughs> A guy named Crowley wasn't only dead. A bullet in his brain, plus his head caved in, plus his features smeared and his clothes gone to make identification impossible plus being drowned in Long Island Sound. You put your heart in your work, Stacy. I didn't kill Crowley. Nobody will believe you. Sure, I'm a dog with a bad name. Grab Stacy, hang the frame on him. Okay, start lying at me. Lying? Isn't that why I'm down here with the smell of fish and rats? Why, you can... Maxine, lay off. <laughs> Maxie insults easy. Stop baiting him, Craig. He's a hothead. I must remember to cool him off someday. I'm waiting to hear the lie. There was bad blood between me and Crowley, sure. I never made a secret of it. 
Crowley began taking horse bets on my side of the street. Like a chump, I shot off my mouth publicly where stoolies could pipe my remarks to the cops. Shut off your mouth about what you were going to do to Crowley. That's right. But you didn't. I didn't get a chance to. You tried to, however. Yeah. I'll give you the truth with nothing held back. At your own risk. Under these circumstances, I don't regard it as confidential. The day before Crowley was fished out of the river, I trailed him to Obermeyer's boathouse over on the north shore of Long Island. But. What's the big but? Crowley shook me. I bushed for him in my car off the pier, figuring he'd come walking right into my gun. He never came off the pier. He took off by motorboat. That's your story? It's the honest truth. Why are you crying at me? Get whoever beat me to Crowley. Get me in the clear. I'll pay you a fat fee. If you live. I'll live. I've got a hot flash for you. There's a shoot-to-kill order out for you. <laughs> I'm in Acapulco, China. Only I know different now. You mean you'll finger me? I mean. It's a chance I'll have to take. The way it stacks, you're my only chance. Why not let me surrender you alive? No good. I'd hate myself in the hot seat. Maxie. Yeah, boss? Dump Craig somewhere. Crease him a little? A little. I can't risk you being able to pinpoint my hideout, Craig, if you decide against me. Well, I've been hit on the head before. I don't want Craig injured, Maxie. Uh, just like you say. A big break for you, Shamus. <laughs> I came to with the 3rd Avenue L roaring through my head. I was on a stoop front, tilted at an angle, my hat down over my eyes, and an empty pint bottle at my feet, like a bum sleeping off a bottle of paint remover. Sensitive Maxi had a sense of humor after all. I found a note pinned inside my coat. Craig, I've got a wife and kids. Please, Stacy. Pinned to the note was a thousand-dollar bill, a retainer. <laughs> a wife and kids. If it was a lie, it was a good one. It was about the only way Stacy could hook me as a helper. Looking to hail a cruising cab, I got a first-hand view of Metropolitan Police Efficiency. A familiar flivver that breathed so close it flicked lint off my trousers. Barry Craig! Lieutenant Trav Rogers. Climb in. Must I? It's an order. Where are we going? To make a police entry that you've been recovered safe and sound. What's the gag? You tell me. You were reported as kidnapped two hours ago. <laughs> Joke. I'm not in the habit of wasting official time on practical jokes. A Broadway news vendor with a stand across from Father Dovey's statue phoned in a report that a gunman picked you off the sidewalk and took you for a ride. Hmm. Nice to know our great big city is on its toes. Uh, I anticipated the worst. I have my men checking hospitals, ditches, cellars, and the morgue. Uh, tell them they can go back to playing peanut. Craig, what was it about? About? The snatch. Oh. <laughs> Trev, I wish I could tell you, only... Uh, only? I got hit on the head. Here, feel the lump. So? So I don't know anything. Uh, I got a touch of amnesia from the blow. Craig? Uh, let me out at the corner, huh, like a sweetheart. I, I got an important engagement with a boathouse. Overmeyer's boathouse looked like a wreck washed ashore by a hurricane. Scrap iron, old anchors, piles of rusted junk. Like Overmeyer never threw anything away. Boats for rent, hour, day, or week, the sign read. Hello? Hey, uh... Oh, uh, you rent motorboats? You can read. Sassy at your age, and you won't make out with St. Peter. Uh, what do you want? Civility. I ain't got any rent boats. Who's kidding who? Brace yourself for a shock, Overmeyer. I don't have to. You're a detective. It shows. Big feet, bad jokes, and a swelled head. Now, what'd you after? A murderer. You won't find him here. The victim was a man named Crowley, a man you rented a boat to. I ain't never murdered a customer. Do you have some reason for being a little slippery, Grandpa? Hmm. See through it, do you? Like through glass. I've got a reason. Two hundred dollars. Meaning? The deposit is, uh... Crowley? 
Crowley left for the motorboat. He never came back for it. He never brought the boat back. Found it scattered on a sandbar. Repairs on it came to more than $200. Relax, I'm not parting you for your money. So $200 is why you never made a police report. Police report, you say? That slippery note's back. You knowingly held back information bearing on a murder case. Yeah, I'm a poor man. And a great eight chiseler. Where was Crowley taking himself to? How could I know? Because you're the inquisitive type. Mm. Murder Island? Murder Island? Name it got from the tenants on it. Where is Murder Island? About four miles north by east out there in the sound. Who tenants it? Vince Keeley. If you're a detective, you'll know him. Yeah, I do. Gambling's on. Only nobody's ever proved it. On trial for murder last year, only the jury didn't convict. Keeley had an alibi. Yeah, a surprise alibi. The last-minute kind that knocks down a case. I want a motorboat and a chartered course to Murder Island. A storm coming up. Well, not for hours, the way the sky looks. Storms are deceiving. I'll take the chance. I'll want a deposit. I'll bring the boat back. If Keeley lets you come back, I'll want a deposit. Storms were deceiving. The storm had come at me. Like Obermeyer had push button control over storms and was having this laugh at me. Rain in buckets from overhead and, and the river splashing over me below. Faster than I could bail water. It was only minutes before I could swim for it. <laughs> what flashes through your head when you see death working you over? One measly thought playing over and over like a record stuck in a groove. Why did this have to happen to me? When there was no doubt about Obermeyer losing a boat to Davy Jones, I started the long swim. <laughs> Coming up for the third time. Water running out of your nose and ears. You get hallucinations. Pleasant ones. My hallucination was a sea nymph with the build of a channel swimmer. Looking at her face was like leafing through an old album. She was every lady that I'd ever known, starting with my mother. Lie on your back. Give me your hand so I can pull you to shore. Give her my hand. Talking like my life was her special problem. Hold tight now. Hold tight. You obey. You let her take charge while you go to sleep. I knew I was still alive by the sand flies making a playground of my chest. I was on a beach littered with fish skeletons. Hello. And a girl flopping beside me like a come to Bermuda poster of honeymooners. A girl with none of the faces in the old album. Flash storm capsized your boat. Yeah. Obermeyer worked that trick with push buttons. What'd you say? Never mind. You rescued me, huh? I saw you thrashing around like a dying fish a hundred yards offshore. How come you were on hand to see me? Have you noticed my swimsuit? I've got eye strain. Are you always swimming in a flash storm? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I'm Barry Craig. The detective? Oh, I can't believe I'm that famous. You are along 52nd Street. Hmm. 21 and nightclub row. I'm Rose Renee. The queen of burlesque. Oh, I can't believe I'm that famous. You are among uh, connoisseurs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly where are we? On Murder Island. Oh, you belong to it? I'm married to it. Married? Let me try to guess. Mrs. Vince Keeley. Play hearts and flowers, Maestro. It's as bad as that? It's a jail sentence. I'm a prisoner of love. Vince bought me only he welched on the payment. He welched after I said I do. Why the frank talk? Well, I feel I broadcast. That's my nature. I'm cooped up on this crummy island so Vince won't have to fight off the boys giving me the eye. The only glad rags I get to wear is a swimsuit. So pick up and go. I'm allergic to morgues. Yeah. Murder is Vince's business, they say. That's no joke. Vince connived his way out of one murder rap last year with a phony alibi. Yeah, I remember the trial. 
Who was it again Vince was charged with knocking off? Dixie Dugan, his business partner. Oh, Slot yeah. machines, dice houses, stolen liquor. Dugan was fed up, about to confess all to the DA when he suddenly turned up dead. Vince served champagne that night to celebrate. Why are you telling me all this? On the hunch that its case reopened, that you're here after Vince. You really want a divorce? Oh, any old way. Then tell me about a fellow named Crowley. Crowley was Vince's star witness last year. Crowley's alibi for Vince got Vince acquitted. Sister, your divorce is practically on the horizon if you come through with this next one. Did Crowley come here to murder Alan lately? Crowley was always coming to the island. He and Vince were squabbling all the time. What about? Hush money. I passed the time getting an earful of things. Crowley was putting the bite on Vince. Blackmail for his perjured testimony? I ask you. How about Sam Stacy? Never heard of him. Stacy's being accused of murdering Crowley. It's news to me. I'm shut off from the outside world. Look, I gotta go now before Vince sends out a searching party. Don't let on to Vince we met. Am I the dope to kill the golden goose? A snake in Vince's bosom. Boredom wasn't Rose's only motive for putting Hubby on the spot. She had her eye on Big Doe and a high old life as a merry widow. Vince Keeley acted as outraged as a guy could get. Hey, uh, Craig, you've got rocks in your head coming here to burn me. Let's confine the argument to Crowley. I haven't seen or heard of Crowley for over six months. Oh, no? No. Then how was the payoff worked? What payoff? The blackmail money to Crowley for the perjured alibi last year. Hey, you're asking for something. You hinting the river? Now, look, you got me all wrong. I made a shady buck once, sure. It's all behind me. I'm out of the rackets now, clean as a whistle, living respectably. Why, I'm even holed up on the island to keep out of trouble, to, to improve my mind and amount to something more than a mug. I can't cry. I don't have a handkerchief on me. Hey, look around you, Craig. All the books on them shelves. I promised myself I wouldn't get off this island until I read every one of them. Why, I even take piano lessons. How about typewriter practice? I asked you to quit writing me. So you didn't murder Crowley to stop his blackmail? No. You also denied that he perjured for you once? I deny it, yeah. And Sam Stacy, Know him? Not familiarly. A punk bookie somewhere, isn't he? He is. They're pinning the Crowley rap on him. Well, it's nothing to me. We through? No. Who was your lawyer? George Brooks. Did Brooks defend you in that murder trial last year? Yeah. Now what are you up to? Just familiarizing myself with all the ramifications of your living. The coming genius like you with books and a piano. I, I might want to do a profile for the society pages. Craig, get out of here. Sure. But first I'm showing you this. What? A rod, huh? A rod. I'll take some killing before I'm killed. You're crazy. Prove it by ferrying me off the island. I uh, lost my boat to a storm. I'll have you ferried off, but stay off. Back in town, George Brooks, the mouthpiece, was twice as outraged as Vince Keeley'd managed to be. Craig, you've no right to persecute Vince Keeley. I haven't, huh? The man's turned over a new leaf. He's reformed. He's cut off every association he had with his former life. Let's boil it down to murder. Accusing Vince of murdering Miss Crowley is fantastic. How about accusing Vince of winning acquittal in a murder trial through the late Crowley's perjured testimony? That's a cheap, contemptible lie. I defended that case. I know. Why do you represent a man as notorious as Vince Keeley? Because I believe every man has some good in him. Because I'm not a blue nose or a moralist. Because I have every evidence Vince Keeley wants to live a decent, useful life if given a chance. You're positive Keeley uh, hasn't done murder past or present? If I believed otherwise, I wouldn't raise a finger to help him. Whoever murdered Crowley, it wasn't Keeley. And now, if you don't mind, I have a busy schedule. Okay, if I use your phone for a minute? If you must. Barry Craig speaking. Give me Lieutenant Trav Rogers. Craig, if you mean this as some psychological trick, it's utterly childish. <laughs> Is that why you're beginning to perspire? Over coffee and sinkers, I got the benefit of Trav Rogers' power of analysis. Putting one and one together from what you've told me, one notion keeps standing up in my head, Craig. Said notion being... That you might end up where you began, with your uh, 
client. Stacy murdered Crowley like the police bulletins insist, huh? Yes. Stacy hired you as a smokescreen. He heard Crowley had business with the Czar of Murder Island and... And hoped I'd uh, create a competing suspect in Vince Keeley. And take the heat off Stacy. The notion makes sense, but... You don't buy it. Not until I have another look at Murder Island. Looking for what? <laughs> the Queen of Clubs. Rose Renee. And at the terrain, the rocks, shrubbery. I'm curious about Crowley's missing clothes, his personal effects. Crowley's clothes? He wasn't wearing any when he came out of the river. You've got a point. Find any article of Crowley's on Murder Island and you've made a liar out of Vince Keeley. Crowley hadn't been around in over six months, Vince swears. Let's go. Oh, just a minute. Uh, you including yourself in? It's suicide to Buck Keeley and his crowd alone. I'm the suicidal type. Uh, morbid depths to my personality, my horoscope says. Ah, Craig, don't be stubborn or vain. The case is too big, too important for a confidential operative to lone wolf it. I've done okay so far without company. Then I'll have to throw the book at you. You're representing a fugitive from justice, a man we've issued orders to shoot on sight. The regulations governing your license... Cut. Nice speech, but uh, I'm only half convinced. Now, uh... Give me the other half. I don't want to see you dead. Your repulsive kisser is an eyesore I've gotten used to. Like poison ivy in July. <laughs> Lieutenant, you are cordially invited on an excursion to Murder Island. We combed every nook and crag of Murder Island, but no luck. Uh, my aching feet, Craig. I can make a surveyor's map of this rock pile from memory. So we drew a blank. You! Will that be your queen of clubs? It is. Very, Craig. And friend? Lieutenant Trav Rogers. What have you got? A divining rod for locating me? I've been watching you for half an hour. You're wasting your time. Am I? You won't find Crowley's clothes. How do you know what we're searching for? Is that hard? It even occurred to me to look for him. How'd you make up? Ashes. Ashes. The clothes were burned. See that stone incinerator over there? Yes. That's where Vince burned them. Still punching for that divorce, huh? Lead me to the ashes. Hmm. These are the ashes of fabric. You sure? I did time in police lab. Fabric burns in its own special way. The ash has a consistency. Hey, I've got something that practically converts the ash back to a suit of clothes. What is it, Craig? What does this look like to you? Uh, cufflink. What's left of it? Any initials? C. C for Crowley. That settles Vince's hash. Oh, freedom, it's wonderful. Postpone that freedom, Jag sister. Hubby's still a long way from the disaster you wish on him. A last mile away. Vince knows your investigation's going to blow hot any minute. That's why he's got his mouthpiece here now. George Brooks is here? Yes, Vince couldn't get his lawyer here fast enough after you came calling. It's murder and this time no phony alibi. I can go back to sleeping nights. I can breathe. I can live. You're uh, putting on quite a show, Miss Renee. I don't make a mystery of my feelings. Lieutenant, I'm glad and I acted. Go rub that ash in Vince's face. Tell him what a homicidal maniac he is and put the handcuffs on him. Well, why don't you go? Quite a repertory, Rose Renee. Hysterics. They were long overdue. Vince Keeley roped her into marriage and never let go of the noose. The way you work up sympathy. I'm not all cop, Trev. Who makes the arrest? It's your case. Door's locked. A pistol shot, Craig. From inside the house. Vince! Vince! Let me in, Vince! Can you identify Vince. whose voice? Brooks, the mouthpiece. Open Asking Vince to open the door? Sounds like Vince shot himself. Locked himself in a room and shot himself. Make with that bell again, Trav, and don't take your thumb off it. Who? Craig. And Lieutenant Rogers. What was that shot? Vince. In the library, he locked himself in and shot himself. Rough. I begged him not to, not suicide. What alternative did you suggest, Brooks? Alternative? Lieutenant means suicide or the chair for murder. It was six of one and a half a dozen of another for Vince. Yes, I suppose you're right. You sound like you've changed your mind about Vince's reformed character. Vince changed it for me. He confessed many things to me. I've been a blind fool 
What did Vince confess about Crowley? Vince confessed to murdering Crowley. In the library, Vince Keeley lay in peace with a look on his face that said he wasn't sorry to go. <laughs> Queen of clubs bawled like a baby. The senseless kind of tears women are famous for. While the mouthpiece, Brooks, beat his breast and put Vince's <laughs> confession on the record. I've been duped, tricked, made the fool. Vince's confession, please. Vince had hired Crowley to perjure in the trial last year. Mind you now, I believed Vince innocent. Since then, blackmail with Crowley demanding heavier sums. On Crowley's threat to expose his perjury for Vince? Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Vince had to pay to prevent reopening of an old case. Crowley bled him white until... Until Vince murdered him and threw him into the river. Yes, that's it, substantially. Uh, Craig. What? Which of us tells him? It's still my case. You're under arrest, Brooks. Why, you're insane. Shut up and listen. Smoke rises to the ceiling and hangs there. You fired a phony shot in the outer hall when we rang the bell. You staged a fake suicide. You'd already killed Vince Keeley in here. Well, what possible motive would you I have? You could be the big shot behind Vince's rackets. Vince had the low mentality of a racket boy, not a biggie. Crowley's threat against Vince threatened you even more. I won't stand for and this. And you lie down for it. Uh, uh, Get off the floor, Brooks, and listen to more. <laughs> you also killed Crowley. Vince would be the world's prized chump to pay Crowley blackmail or even worry about Crowley. That's double jeopardy, Brooks. Crowley could confess perjury from now to doomsday. But no power on earth, no new evidence could force Vince to stand retrial for a murder he'd already stood trial for once and found acquittal. He's your prisoner, Trav. I'm turning him over to you. A week later, Stacy looked me up to thank me. In a midtown half bra where the Wiener Schnitzel made you hungry for ham and eggs. You took the curse off me, Craig. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Mad dog killer. Those headlines gave me the willies. You're grateful, huh? I'm on bended knees. You can't reach for your wallet like that. Reach for my wallet? There was talk of a fat fee. Oh. I, uh, I hate to do this to you, Craig. But the fact is... The fact is... I'm broke. <laughs> Government's new bookie tax. I folded my tent. No bets, no horses. I'm down to driving a beer truck. For the wife and kids. Oh, uh, that's another thing, Craig, I, I, I want to tell you about. <laughs> no kids? No wife, even. I'm not married. Hmm. Good night, folks. See you next week. been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Murder Island, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story titled Fatal Appointment, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a beautiful girl dies in a hotel room. A man gives all for love, and an appointment for romance winds up in a rendezvous with death. See you next week, folks. Featured in the role of Rose was Elspeth Eric. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. Now enjoy Meredith Wilson's Music Room on NBC. Mm -hmm.